So, who do you got? Ayan, Chad, nice Chad, thanks for joining in. Chris, Eugene, Jeff, John, Josh, Mark, hey Mark, nice you made it. Owen, Parker, Ryan, Scott, Seb, Tim, Tim, my man. Go to the chat, guys. All right, awesome. All right, so you're all ready? Shall we start? Yes, no, maybe. Coffee time, bathroom time. <laughs> yes for the coffee. <laughs> okay, so. All right, so let's start. So you guys tell me if I'm going too fast or too slow. I have no freaking idea how long it will take, um, so I'll try to fit it into one hour. And um, yeah, so here's the agenda. This is uh, this is a quick mail webinar, but I'm also going to show you two copywriting use cases, um, actually real cases that are applicable no matter what system you're using. Uh, so you just may want to stick around. And for people who stick to the end, I'll throw a small bonus at the end as well. Hey, Tim, you're joining. Good stuff. Um, all right, so let's get started. How I give you a bit of background before we deal into the subject. Um, this was my pain um, at the beginning when I actually started. Uh, that actually brings a lot of really painful memories. So I had like two hours per day to work on my business. I had at that time a full-time job, uh, a wife and two kids. Uh, have, yeah, fortunately, I still have the wife and two kids. Don't have the full-time job anymore. Woohoo! Um, was trying to reach out a cold market to get people on the phone. I had no prior relationship with them, and I wanted to understand their problem pretty deeply. Um, yeah, my high leverage activity was really doing interviews. So sometimes uh, that prevented me from sending emails when I wanted. I was, contact I was living in Europe and contacting Australia, so I could not send email at the best time for my prospect. That would mean like 2, uh, 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, so I kept sending email in the afternoon, which was not really ideal because they were having like meetings with clients and stuff like that. So I think my reply rates um, suffered from this at that time. Sending email took me around 30 minutes each day, so if you consider I had like two hours, that was like a, a good chunk of my time. Follow-up was totally inconsistent, just because, you know, it would consume me too much time, I would spend the whole morning doing that. And one of the sneaky things that we don't always see is the, uh, my mood affected my impression of how successful or bad my email copy was. I had no evidence uh, to support how it was working. and. It was really frustrating because all my emails were in Gmail, so I should be able to get this information, but it would require too much time. Um, quick question before we go further. Does anyone relate to any of that? Hopefully not quick mail users. Uh, okay, Scott, I'm recording it. Hopefully it will work. No idea. I'll, I'll try in the end. Arjun, uh, what system did I use? Uh, at that time, uh, I'll come to that because I tried a lot of different tools, but uh, at that time, I was just using LinkedIn initially. LinkedIn is a funny thing. I was having like a pretty good response rate, of it, although it's very difficult to get any metrics out of that. Um, but I was contacting too many people uh, who say they ignored me. Uh, they didn't know me, so basically my account was restricted, and then I had to move back to cold emails, and that's where I experienced all the pain in, uh, in their glory. Oh, nice, Eugene. Not since you're no, since you're on quick mail. Nice stuff. All right, so that was for the pain. So what I needed was something really simple. I needed a system that could send initial email for me at the best time for my prospect. Um, I was just copying, pasting things and uh, changing a few fields like name and company. So you know, shouldn't be too hard, right? Um, I needed a way to track accurately who responded and follow up uh, with people who didn't. And lastly, I needed a system that could track metrics on a series of emails, not just individual emails. 
Ah, good stuff. Uh, Arjan, you're going to tell us if it works for you. You're trying 50-50 uh, strike on quick mail. Nice. Do let me know. Send me an email. Um, I knew virtual assistant was not a solution very early on, so I just didn't want to have them uh, access my primary email address. That was one of the big things, and I didn't want to create like yet another email account for this purpose. Um, plus, you know, if I want to go with virtual assistant, I would have need to to hire them, uh, train them, track their performance. So in the end, I would have tracked my VA instead of tracking my emails. Uh, granted, that could have been working, but at the end of the day, the amount of work involved in tracking follow-ups would require a total army of, of virtual assistants. I prefer them to concentrate on finding good emails than actually tracking, you know, things that could be done by by system. So the tools, I tried a lot of them. And, um, yeah, the cool thing is, as most of you know, I was part of a badass tribe of entrepreneurs, and the information about cool cool latest software went pretty fast on our Facebook group. So by the time I actually hit the cold email stage, um, I had a good series to choose from. That's how I discovered most of them. But um, none were really up to the job. There, there was always a few problems with it. So one was um, I still needed to be involved with sending the initial emails, so mail merge and such. And that really pissed me off because that means like 2 a.m. in the morning and, you know, I fancy sleeping at that time. Um, tracking was totally suboptimal. Uh, people responded from different email address and sometimes forwarded it to someone else who then responded to me. That meant I had to verify each response stop the follow-up, which in the end is as bad as tracking everything yourself. The metrics were completely inconsistent. Um, only tracking individual emails instead of a series of emails, including the follow-ups. Bringing back unresponded uh, email in the inbox was a total joke. I still needed to check you know, they responded from different address and I had way too many of them and copy pasting was really not fun at that time. Yeah, slacker, Jeremy. Exactly. I've been, I've, been, I've been slacking my whole life. That's why I'm so effective because I don't like to do things that are tedious. Um, when I found a tool that automatically follow up, I still needed to cancel manually if the prospect responded. And um, okay, and then the other one was like, he sends an email on the, you send an email on Friday and on Sunday the person receives a follow-up saying like, hey, he's waiting for an answer. You know, what a joke. So I had no way to, to test performance of different follow-ups, even if I had different ones. It, it was just terrible. Any of you experienced anything like that? Does that ring the bell? Yep, Eugene. Yep, Parker. No one else? Okay, so Arjan is um, he's getting low responses, but timing is okay. Josh, very much so. I have to manually resend my original emails. Wow, what a pain. Hey, Mark, thanks for joining in. So what I wanted, one day I just made a list of what I wanted. And if you think I'm being unreasonable, just let me know in the chat, but I don't think so. Um, I wanted a simple tool I could just set up and forget. So a tool I could dump all my prospect emails and it will go ahead and contact just a few prospects at a certain time without me being involved at all. So I wanted a tool I could take care of my follow-up for me and I could trust it. Um, whether I'm sleeping, sick, in a call or just enjoying life in general, which I love doing. And yeah, I wanted to just focus on my on my email copy, you know, writing good copy to make sure people respond to me. All in all, I didn't want to to have it on my mind uh, so I could focus on people who responded to me. That's really all I wanted. Um, so in the end, I had to build it, and um, that's how the process is looking like in QuickMail. There is only four steps, and you have to do it only once. Oh, Chad, auto-emailing plus the VA until the email is a beautiful part. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people are actually using VA to, um, to enter the, uh, the emails, and then they have nothing else to do. Yeah, that's great. So, um, yeah, QuickMail works like that. You do it once. You need to create a group, at least. You need to import your prospect into that group. You need to write the template emails. You enable the automation, and then you sit down and do something else. So what I keep on hearing whenever I talk to people is this way. 
So if your daily process looks like this, that means you need to run manually, you know, a mail merge or set up an automation to follow up. And then every time you need to cancel stuff, follow ups for people that respond. Um, yeah, you may want to try it this way, which is basically you sit down and you respond to people who reply to your email. Hmm. The funny thing is actually when I started having that, I had my 30 minutes back and I just didn't know what to do with my time. You're not seeing any, anything, uh, Eugene? Does anyone else see the screen properly? What screen are you on, guys? Wow, okay, that's pretty crap. Yeah, maybe I should hit the button to actually, re to actually yeah, okay, my bad, guys. All right, thanks for listening. <laughs> All right. Okay, anyway, so, um, all right, next webinar is uh, going to be scheduled Saturday or <laughs> something like that, we'll see. Um, anyway, so, thanks, Parker. All right, so, um, yeah, what I was saying, yes, I had like 30 minutes back and I just didn't know what to do with it. Um, but then, because I started getting the follow-ups, you know, the follow-ups were, were starting to kick in and I started to have more people to respond to. And this really made me realize how much energy I was really spending on tracking emails. And it's much more than, you know, what, what people think because it's always on sort of their mind. All right. So, um, time for a sneak peek. Um, enough talking. I'm going to show you my, my own system, how I set up my own system. And Demo is actually the only time I really play with my account nowadays because I have like a 30% response rate, more or less, and it's pretty much running on all on autopilot. So what I'm going to do just for you guys is I'm going to run QuickMail, and I want you in the chat to ask, this is my account, and it's got everything, including some special buttons that you know, no one else can have. But go ahead in the chat and tell me what you want to see next. And then I can show it to you. If anything is unclear, just let me know. And I'm happy to help. If not, then I'm just going to go through the um, uh, setting up a new group and importing stuff and so on. So Parker, I'd love to see the prospects page and how to how you use that after a sequence is sent. Okay, I can show you that. Um, okay, so let me go to the prospect page. And then bring one. Usually here is how it works. So someone just responded to me. It's on my quick mail SAS sequence. I'm going to zoom a bit so you guys can see a bit better. Uh, Mark, Jeremy, what do you think about allowing a sequence to be exported or shared so it can be imported? Um, do you mind explaining? Um, Expanding a bit on that, what do you mean as a use case? So Parker, I'm going to select this guy. No idea who he is. And actually, I have no freaking idea who people are before they answer me, which is a great feeling. Before, I'd like to do a lot of research on who they are, what they do, and things like that. And then in 50% of the case, they don't respond to me. So that's very frustrating. Um, Okay, so this one was pretty straightforward. I sent him an email about three hours ago and eight hours ago. Um, eight hours ago. Okay, that's a different guy, actually. I just added recently. 
it's not a good one, let's try someone else. Actually, I can say, responded. And we go to the last page. Um, oh no, that's my financial planners. Mm -hmm. Mark. Let's see who Mark is. Okay, so basically what I would do, uh, Parker, is I will, um, I will only go to the detail page of a prospect whenever I set up a call with them. So when people answer me, I go to their page and I see what they did. So in this case, it's not really great. I'm, let me try to find someone who clicked and answered me. That'd be nicer. Uh, let me see all the events. This is the latest event that happened on my account. I can see Dane answered. So that's the one we just looked at. Yeah, it's not the one I'm interested in. Um, yeah, cool. That guy clicked on my calendar. That's pretty cool. Let me check on him. So 15 days ago, that's a great one. 15 days ago, I sent him an email. So whenever someone book me, yeah, so he's probably going to answer me soon. But whenever someone book me sometime, I look at their page and see what they did and what was the sequence that happened. So 15 days ago, this person emailed me, uh, I emailed them, um, and then he opened the email multiple times, quite a lot of time. 10 days ago, another follow-up, looked at the email, Seven days ago, another follow-up, looked at the email twice, then another follow-up, email, email, open, 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 and then click. So usually what happens next is people actually, um, uh, people will actually book me. So he's already looking at the Calendly, so he's pretty warm at this stage. He's pretty engaged. That's how I would use my prospect detail page. Does that make sense, Parker? <laughs> yes, Mark. Actually, it is possible. I'm going to show you. Uh, Eugene, is there a way to verify the email is good before it's sent out? Yes. Yeah, I got a lot of email failure. That's also why I limited to 50 people. I got uh, one of my early users screwed up 50 leads in one go, 50 prospects in one go because he was, uh, because he, you know, um, she mixed up um, her copy in, uh, in the initial email, so that's kind of painful. Um, let me just show you, Mark, how you do that. So you go to your sequence, uh, you, select, you select one, let's say this one. That's one I used on, uh, actually not this one, yeah. Okay, I could use this one. That's one I use on my financial planners. Then here you got make private or make public. If you click on make public, a link appears. So I'm going to copy this link. You open it into a different different tab. That's the one. And then you can send it to someone else. And he can add it to his own sequence. So that's how you will actually share uh, sequences in QuickMail. And you can share it between accounts this way. Does that answer your question, Mark? Cool, good stuff. So Eugene, um, the only way you can preview things at the moment is only on the initial email. So um, you can select a different one. Uh, you can click on preview emails here. So you could see exactly what type of email you're going to send with the correct field being replaced. Uh, you can change obviously the sequence and see how it will look like if I do tests. And that will be your own sequence test. So you can preview it like that. It's ah, the email is valid and working. I don't care about that, to be honest. A um, couple of reasons why. Um, first, my lists are not so bad that I have this problem. And second, my stats are not in, impacted. 
So it could cause problem in terms of maybe spamming, um, make your account look bad, but then that will come from your quality of your, your list. There is no way to, to verify it at this stage. You have a few, a few very fine systems actually. Um, I, yeah, let me just write a note and I'll send you an email about the uh, email verifying system I know of. Oh, one, one, one cool trick I know someone does. I don't recommend doing that, but um, <laughs> some people do that. It's not a black hat kind of thing. They open a, a MailChimp account or multiple MailChimp accounts. They put it into it, not even reportive. It's even, it's even better. They, they put it into it and they send like a fake small email. They don't care if the email, if the account is banned. So they send it a lot and then they re-export the list on only the people who are, you know, who open their email. That's all they do. It's pretty cool. Pretty sneaky. I don't, uh, I don't support this, but that's one way you could do. Yeah, reporting is pretty good if you're doing one by one, but not when you've got like 600 or 900. Oh, nice. Chad, do you want to share? So Chad say he created um, something to check the email server to see if the email address is a valid box. You guys need to know about spam traps as well. Um, I, don't know, I don't know the link right now. Um, I, will, I will put it. Okay, link of system to verify email. You guys have to be careful about spam traps as well. Spam traps are fake account created by uh, providers just to, if they receive something, they flag you straight away as a, as a spammer. Yeah. Okay, I had another question from Mark at some point. I'm going, is there a way to prioritize activity like clicking on Calendly do you have to hunt for it or is it at the top of the list? Yeah, I want to do that. It's lead ranking, Mark. Um, it's one of the possible things I want to do next. Currently, you have to play with the, um, with the live, uh, live event. I don't like that. I think there is a way, much better way of doing that. But currently, this is the only way you can do that. So you can have your live feed running. And when it clicks, uh, when, you, when you hear a small sound, then that person actually did something. Maybe I should do different sound as well, depending on the action. Okay, I can do that. Um, can the start of a sequence be scheduled? Oh, hell yes, that's the whole point of quick mail. So for example, you can see my start of sequence SAS is due in three days. Why three days? Because I don't send during Saturday and Sunday. But um, if you go into your group, uh, you can see here if the automation is enabled or not for the start of a sequence. So I got three sequences that are scheduled to be run in three days. So let me check. Um, let me look at and, and oh, I hear a sound. I mean, someone just popped up. So Robin just opened his email a few seconds ago. That's cool. Um, all right, let me just check. Okay, I can do the financial planners, for example. So, financial planners, I could say, okay, oh that's stupid, my batch size is zero. Let me come back. Uh, actually, I could take one that is taken already. So this is my SAS sequence. You can see the automation is, is, in, um, is scheduled to be run on Monday at 4 p.m., my time. Now there is a time zone support, by the way, guys. You can go into the settings and then change your time zone. Let me show you that quickly. Here you can change what time zone you want to be on. Actually, yes. I haven't set up my time zone. What a lame. Uh, there you go. Boom. Okay. Yeah, no more time calculation. Sorry about that, uh, Chad. Took me some time to do that. Okay, so 6 p.m. Uh, let's say I don't want 6 p.m. I actually want 4 p.m. So I cancel my automation. If I cancel my automation, nothing happens. 
or I can put an automation at uh, 4 p.m., which I wanted initially, actually. Hop. And there you go. So the cool thing about this, this is the groups uh, details page. I want to do more stuff into it that's going to grow. But right now, you can have like a quick look as to I have a batch size of 10. That means I got 43 days of automation automatically done before I need to worry about adding more um, people into my pipe. Does that answer your question, Arjan? I suppose that's a yes. <laughs> Any other questions so far? Uh, the live feed the chat is on the event. You click on the events, and then here at the bottom you got it, live feed. Yeah, live feed is something I want to improve. Um, uh, if I, it's, I don't feel it's so great right now. Uh, I'd love to have it like to sort of constantly available or visible, not having like a different window. So maybe something around those lines here, like something automation telling you something. I don't know yet how it looks like. Ah, Chrome desktop notification. Nice. Should think about that. Thank you for mentioning that. Mm -hmm. Some people mentioned so yes, well, signals. A lot of tools are pretty good in that domain, much better than QuickMail. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, you guys are not so curious about different things that you don't have access to, but that's fair enough, I suppose. This is my global stats, so I show you I'm pretty much using my tool daily. Uh, this is my last uh, two months. So you can see I have like reasonable base. I was getting too much responses, reduce the sequence, then bump it up, then put it middle. So now it's middle ground and I have like a good response rate. So if I go at the bottom, this is my number of responses per day. So 10 is about good. That's, that's what I want to get. Anything else, or we should just switch to um, to the next next part? Yeah, Brett said I should offer a full concierge service like setup, copywriting, review stats for thirty day and such. I would pay a lot for it. How much would you pay for that, Brett? <laughs> Mark, would you pay for that if I was doing it on your behalf? I know you're in that process. How much would you pay for that? How much would you value it? <laughs> so we got bread, 300 to 1,000, depending on the package. It's a good photo, Brett. Thanks for mentioning it. And I'm just, I'm just testing the water here. Wow, we got 297 to 497. That's pretty accurate, Mark. <laughs> yeah, very specific. I love it. 
All right, so what we'll do is we'll put quick mail on the side because the, you're right, guys. The hard thing is just to set up quick mail. Once it's set up, you know, you only need to care about responses. And I know Mark cares about engagement a bit more. So it's more about um, getting posted on, in tune with who is the best one to follow up next if you're running out of responses. So that's a cool stuff. Really love it. Uh, yeah, we need to work with Outlook. I know that, Mark. We work on that. Um, okay, so let's, uh, I'll, I'll put it on the side. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free. I will come back to that at the end with the Q&A. Let me try to find back where my presentation is. There we go. Okay, so this is a cool thing for you. This is, I got four, basically I was brainstorming and I say, okay, well, there is four direction in which I can expand and improve the software. So which one do you think will, uh, will suit you best? Which one would you like the software to expand into? Uh, Multi-conversation is basically the ability to start multiple sequences on prospects. Maybe they finish one sequence, they want to put it into another one if they haven't responded. Uh, if they have open and click, then you want to put them into a different sequence and things like that. It's basically lead nurturing. Sales acceleration is what we discussed about, the ability to rank people. Uh, who do I need to follow up with next? Um, prospecting is uh, ability to capture emails when you see them, maybe on your website, on a browser, or things like that. It's the ability to list, uh, to generate lists. Or team features, which is something I, I get asked a, a lot recently as the software starts to appeal to sales organization with more than just one one-man band like I was. So different type of problems, different type of needs. Um, which one do you like most if you have to pick one, guys? Just give me the number. One for team, okay. So you, basically, you're, everyone that says one say, I love the way QuickMail works and I want to use it for more rather than actually switching in another software. Am I right? Is that basically what you guys think? <laughs> yeah, you can change your mind, that's okay, Chad. Uh, sorry, Tim, I was just basically saying, am I right thinking that everyone choosing number one basically loved using QuickMail and would like to do more of the pipe or more more work into QuickMail, basically, without having to change software again? Is that is that what I'm thinking? Yes, for Owen, okay. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, guys, okay, I heard you, okay, I heard the need, good. So, okay, so I can commit to do the... Um, multi-conversation next, and, and then I'll probably bring up the, uh, the team feature as well as I get more of that um, coming up from prospects as well. Yes, so I want to be able to move conversation to different pipelines. Okay, got it, got it guys. Cool, thanks a lot for the feedback, really valuable, awesome. So what I'd like to do next with you is to look at real example of copy along with some metrics. So that's, that's something we heavily share on our Facebook group. Um, so I would encourage you to go there and then, then check it out if you haven't. But um, I don't really go into the actual details of, you know, um, a real copy and then what works, what doesn't. So let me just give you an example. Let me show you one thing. Uh, let me know in the chat if you would reply to this email. Imagine you're receiving this email, appropriate person. And how much do you think the reply rate would be? So something like yes on X percent or no on X percent. Uh, Owen asked, would I be sharing those templates? Um, I think I'll, I'll, I'll probably, the webinar sorry, is recorded. So um, if I don't screw it up, then you'll have it. Otherwise, I'll share my presentation. I'm happy with that. Actually, I may do both. Um, just quickly, Mark, on the uh, Salesforce integration, you can use the BCC. I know it's rubbish, um, but it works for some of my customers. It's rubbish because it doesn't record people writing back to you. Yes, I know, it's shit. Um, what I want to do, Mark, is a simple webhook thing, so it may work with Zapier. I, don't know, I think Zapier also works with Salesforce, so you know everyone may be happy at the end. 
and I'm talking with a pipe drive and I'm trying to talk with close.io as well at the same time. I tried a long time ago to talk to Salesforce and they were totally unuseful, un unhelpful, just mainly because they don't care. Hey, cool, if Zapier works for you guys, I'll definitely try to get Zapier. Uh, no, Zapier to um, integrate with um, uh, CRMs. But maybe other things as well you may want, so I don't know. Like you may say, everyone that clicks, put them automatically in my MailChimp sequence or whatever, I don't know. Um, okay, back to the email. So can you guys say yes on a percentage or no on a percentage? So no if you wouldn't respond to this email or yes if you would. So Parker, yes, commit to the percentage. How much percent do you think? Mark, how much percent do you think? Eugene, how much percent? Arjan, email is too long for the first email. So is that a yes or a no? 25% for Mark. Awesome, I like that. I'm going to take, to take notes. So we got Mark at 25. Eugene, how much? Owen, 20, is that a yes or a no, Owen? A yes at 20%. Awesome. Eugene, a yes at 40%. Chad, 15%. That's going to be fun, guys. I would not respond because the CTA is a calendar look. Okay. Okay, Jeff. Interesting. Interesting thoughts here. 60% Parker. Well, you're going for one end so that if it's high then you win, right? Okay. I guess I guess you guys are going to be pretty disappointed on that one. That's your response rate. I mean, people actually hitting reply and then writing something. So I guess Chad is winning. Well played, Chad. Yes. Chad is doing awesomely well in quick mail. I really love what you're doing, Chad. I think you're fantastic. If I could feature you multiple times, I would do that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So... Um, it's a catastrophe, but clearly there is some room for improvement. Can you guys guess what is wrong? I'm just going to put back the email, hopefully. Hopefully I won't click on the wrong button. Ah, that's good. So can you guess what is long? Okay, we got too long. That's okay, that's one thing, so too long. Can you guess something else, guys? Oh, Arjan, I think, I think the, the time he spent doing me a... Uh, uh, doing a small blog for everyone was already good enough. And I think I used one of his quotes as well on the page. So team robotic and sterile, so basically not talking to the audience, not personal, that's good stuff. Subject delete for John. Yeah, there is a bit of that. It's become overused, appropriate person. So call to action is crap for Jeff. Too much I for Owen, too much featuring on him. Featuring a product for Patrick, I think it's good stuff. It means like selling, yes. And not it's a good stuff, but it's a good good catch. It's not about the client. Well, you guys are pretty good. So you, you guys can figure it out when I say it's bad. And then you basically give me the reason why it's bad. So that's cool. I should have asked why you think it's good next time. <laughs> okay, there's a few things that are, that are not shown actually. And you'll, you'll be surprised because sometimes it's not just the response rate, it's only one part of the picture. In this case, there was way too many links and that activated a spam filter. So his open rate was really terrible. It was like 36.2%. So that means if you, if you scale it to according to, the, to your open rate, so actually people who opened it, it's actually not that bad. He's got 20% response rate. 
we're all been guilty of that, Owen. I wouldn't feel a, I wouldn't feel ashamed. You should have seen my first email. That was terrible. Um, the other thing that is very obvious as well is it's easier to sell. So he's asking for a high initial commitment. He's not really developing or looking to know what that person is and, and start a relationship, which is what people are using email for initially. And it's way too verbal. I mean, busy people will just have no time to respond to that. And you guys find some really cool stuff as well. The not personal is, is basically that. You put no link in your first email. This is a good and a bad thing, actually, Tim. Um, because when you have links, you can you get a, um, you get an accurate picture as to how engaged people are. If you have no links, you have no information about that. It's like saying I don't track sending my emails. Um, it's yeah, I will put just one basically, one that is either the call to action or something that is interesting for for you to to figure out like do they click on my LinkedIn profile or things like that, and. One of the annoying things with all the links he has is like if people click on the link, that brings them to a different window. That brings them out of the flow of the of answering the email. So there's plenty of chance that life happen in the middle, like a dog, you know, or, or your kid or anything else, or a work urgency. I don't know. Yeah, basically I will put an, uh, a link in the email signature, right? Absolutely. Okay, so here's his first here's his first follow up. So it's less verbose. You'll think it's great, right? So can you think the response rate on this one is? Iron, again, a small gain. Five percent for Owen, okay? Six percent for John. <laughs> you guys are going dumb now. <laughs> okay, Brett, fifteen percent. A bit more ballsy. Chad, thirty percent. Nice. Marshall, thanks for joining in. 50% team, wow, you're going all in. 20%, okay, I'm going to tell you why, guys. So, the first follow-up is 1.66%. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, isn't it? And, and his, this person sent a thousand emails. Really, literally. So, you know, the law of numbers apply. So it's not like if you send like 10 emails and figure it out. So his second follow-up has got 0.06% response rate. So it's like 2 out of 1,000 or something like that. So the total is 7.65%. Now, the, re the reason why I think this follow-up is actually pretty bad is because his email here doesn't summary what he's asking, which basically means the person has to still read the first long email, and that's, that's boring. So I think he could very well improve his follow-up by just summarizing it in one sentence. By the way, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm requesting. You know, something really simple. All right, so, I'm going to be brief on this one. I think we are running out of time. But this is basically how I, I, um, I sort of categorize the email, I, I, email copy I see, or the, um, how a sequence is successful. Uh, there is basically three things, the quality of your prospect list, the quality of your copy, and the ability of following up. Um, there is no magic bullet um, for, the, um, for the quality of your prospect list. I'm, I'm not an expert in that one. I really don't know. The quality of your copy is what we, were, we are discussing right now, and we'll see another example pretty soon, a good example, hopefully. Uh, your ability to follow up requires that you only have a very low number of prospects or that you have a good tool for automation, and hopefully that is quick made for that. So automation and personalization was always very difficult, um, so the quality of the list in terms of segmentation is of really high importance. Nope, sorry, no magic bullet. But um, if you don't go for for um, if you don't go for automation, then it, it's less important because you can really customize each email. But it takes a hell of a lot of time. What's the best number of follow up given your stats in quick mails? Uh, I haven't run something across that yet because there is plenty of other parameters. So the quality of the list is a really important parameter too. And we are going to see that in the next. Next, I also have four follow-ups. I would basically say you can have as many follow-ups as you want. 
um, Fabiana, which uh, which is uh, which is doing great, and she's going to be featured in the next month, or actually this month in September. She's um, she's having a funny strategy. She actually put um, follow ups. She runs a sequence, and whenever people are coming close to the end of the sequence, she adds another follow ups, and she keep on adding, 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 adding like that. So it's probably fun, fun way um, she's doing it. So no one actually go cold with, with her. So what my gut is telling me, Chad, I would say four to five follow-ups is usually what I what I have seen working. Um, what I think could work better is if we don't include the previous email at some point. So there's a thing I want to do in in, uh, in QuickMail that will allow a prospect to go from one sequence to another, instead of going cold, it will start another sequence, which basically means it will start another email from, from fresh, from scratch. And I'm not quite sure how I want to do that in terms of stats, because they may be misleading. You know, if you run a second sequence and it works, then you may just wondering, is that because the first sequence was run first? So I have to be careful with stats and think a little bit about, along those lines to, to make sure the stats are relevant. But basically, if your quality, if your list is good, if your copy is good and your ability to follow up is good, you'll have shit lots of responses. So you don't have to worry about that. You have other problems. So let's jump into the second case study. So this is the email someone wrote. So imagine you're receiving this email. Um, same game, guys. Figure out, tell me yes or no if you respond to it, and tell me how much percentage you think it achieves. Arjan say he may be setting up six follow-ups. Yes, try it. Because it doesn't matter in the end. The only thing you get is either someone who never responds to you or someone that responds to you. So I keep following up until I got responses and I don't care what those responses are. Sometimes I have people telling me, hey, thanks for following up. My inbox is a total mess. So that works for me. Don't assume, if people don't answer you, don't assume it's because they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> Parker say in his PS at the bottom of email it says this is attempt three out of three hundred thirty seven emails scheduled to send to you. <laughs> um, I got another idea, Parker. Actually, I uh, actually used this technique in um, in one of my follow ups. Uh, if you subscribe to QuickMail, you receive a certain sequence, and one of the sequences say you should know I'm using my tool, and you're still scheduled to receive ten emails. So you may want to just hit reply now, and that works. Not on everyone, of course. All right, so Arjan, 30%, Chad, 40 Tim, 25%, Owen, 5 Eugene, 40%. What do you think, Mark? What's your guess on this one? Cool, nice to be helpful, um, Parker. Marshall, 16.743, very accurate. Yeah, people enjoy you more, definitely. Patrick, 15%. Mark, you got a guess? All right, you guys are very far off. So let me just give you the answer right now. You ready for it? This is the first initial email, right? There you go. This is reply rate. So who was the closest to that? Chad, 40%. Chad, boom. Chad, my man. Can you write my next um, copy, uh, Chad? <laughs> Chad, tell me why you think he's got a so high response rate. What's working? What's working, guys, for you? What do you think is working? Parker, can I share this sequence? Um, partially. I'll, um, I'll see what I can do. Okay, Eugene says it's easy to reply. Call to action is very easy. Yeah, let me put back the, um, the initial the email. So we got easy call to action. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Personal ball. Yeah, personal. Uh, you guys don't see it? You guys don't see the screen with the email? Or you do? Okay, you do. Okay, good, good. Okay, so we got so far easy call to action, which is basically low commitment from the user, which is an awesome stuff. Yeah, Owen reply yes, that's exactly the thing, low commitment. It's personal. Do you see other things, guys? There's plenty of good tactics into this email. This is just awesome. All right, pay attention to the, um, the subject, guys. Social proof? Uh, it's not quite there, uh, quite that. Who do you think it's talking to? People with no certification or people with certification? Yeah, with, absolutely. So it's a sort of likability. So he's talking to people who consider them as peer, right? So it's coming, and it's, it's great stuff. It's awesome stuff. So likability is really important. Um, so people want to hear from friends, people in the same situation. So likability is extremely powerful. And if you put it straight away into the email, it's like, oh, gee, I want to hear from this guy. Then, and actually, actually, yeah, that's cool. Actually, we could see there is 80.9% open rate. So clearly you see that's working. Yeah. Now let me just write it down. 80.9%. Boom, where the previous one was like a mere 30%. So humor is also very important. We see that in the light, informal tone he's using. He's positioning himself as a friend already, which is great. He's in the business of building relationship. He's not trying to say anything, which give him like a great list to start, you know, to start relationship. And then he could use then this list later on to sell, sell on to. So really great stuff. He's nurturing his people at the same time. The so short, short email is very important for reciprocity point of view. So if send you, someone sends you four lines emails, you will feel bad to just respond, respond to him with a just yes. It's just, um, it's just human nature. If you send him a very short email, then it's easy to say, well, you know, he sent me a really short, concise email anyway. I could just send him yes or something like that. And not only this is short and concise, but it also tells, you know, just reply to me, yes, that's all I need. So he's basically doing like some sort of survey. It's really great. Um, yeah, so low commitment as we discussed, super easy for people to respond. Really cool. Um, that's the guy you want writing your copy. Yes, absolutely, Shad. But look at his first follow-up, guys. If you guys are fast, you can put me a percentage of how much you think this specific follow-up got him answer. So here's his first follow-up. Hey, haven't heard back from you and wondered if you had a chance to shoot me a quick yes. If not being able to synchronize software X and software Y is a pain. If it isn't, or if you don't even use software X, that's fine. Please just let me know. Okay, so we got 30%. All right, guys. Bear in mind, we already got, hey, guys, it can't be that high because, oh, well, unless it's 100%, but it's already 40% in the first email, okay? So it can't be higher than 60%. All right, so we got 10% for when, 20% for Chad. Chad, my man. 21.3% is his response rate on the first follow-up. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> Boom, 73.4% for this guy. And basically, I can't get my family to respond to 73.4%. So Mark, you say, look at this link. Tony is developing inline survey for email, similar to what Netflix sends out, where you click on the link 
and it warms up the answer. Oh, nice. Just a thought would make a nice call to action easy and miserable. That's cool. Thanks, Mark. I'll check that out. So click insights.io. Thanks, Mark. All right. So hopefully that gave you some good ideas. So I'm just going to wrap it up because we are sadly, I, I'll do that all night. It's just, it's just so fun. But I have to wrap it up. So I want to give something for the people who attended. Um, so here's what I give for the people who registered this weekend, if they want to. So if you open an account before Monday, I'll give you five proven sequence of email. You can use right away. And I'll also update, I'll also extend your trial for 30 days. So if you haven't tried it out, that's a great way to do that. Uh, just register and kick me an email saying, hey, I attended the webinar and like to have the perks. That's fine by me. And for people who already have an account, uh, actually, who, who, who doesn't have an account right now? Maybe I'm talking to all converted already. So Marshall, you don't. That's cool. So great, jump on the offer. There is no string attached. If you don't like it, don't use it. <laughs> you want another one, Owen? Nice. Oh, yeah, Scott, same. Same for you, Scott. So just shoot me an email after you created your account, and more than happy to do that for you guys. Thanks, uh, thanks Tim, for the vote of confidence. And for the people, for the people who are already our users, and just to thank you for attending as well, this, this first big webinar. Um, so, yeah, so if you send me your honest feedback on QuickMail, uh, whether you say the good thing or bad thing, I don't care. I just want the honest feedback. Uh, and I still send you the same sequence. But what I do as well is if you send me one link of one of your sequence, I'll give you a quick um, a quick uh, advice on how to change it if, if I see any big thing, like basically what I've been doing right now. So that's unfair to you guys. Ah, Chad, there is nothing to review with yours. They're awesome. You should be the reviewer. <laughs> you, could tell, you could tell them how much their response rate will be before even they send it. This is gold. <laughs> All right. Um, one more thing. Uh, two things I guarantee for the one who haven't tried it. Uh, either you love the product and you'll be on the next webinar or I'll refund you. And yeah, don't miss out on the opportunity. I think that's taking for a slide from someone else. I thought that was cool. Oh, great. A any fallback for custom fields? No. Chad asked me the same thing. He wanted to. I would say just populate with something, you know, in a, as as the lead as a workaround. So populate something in a in a prospect. This is one cool thing. I, um, I was just preparing this webinar and I basically was saying like, okay, well, I need testimonials. I didn't have it prepared any really. So what I did is I looked at a few of my emails I got and I think Eugene, you're, you're recognized one of them actually. And I thought that was really nice. That's the thing that actually, you know, that's the thing why I do quick mail. And that's the thing that goes straight to my heart. So thanks guys for, you know, all the good, good feedback you gave me, whether it's good and bad, I take both to my heart and I try to make it better if it's not good. And if it's good, then uh, thanks. It's, it's, still, it's, still, it's still pleasant to receive them, basically. Scott, is there a cookbook direction to get started with quick mail? That's better than that. You got my, my, my um, funny face on all the pages on huge screen. Uh, it's taking like 40% of the screen until you actually do the actions in the, in the video. So uh, that may not be for the taste of everyone, but at least it should give you some, some heads up on how to, uh, to get going at the start. And if it doesn't, send me an email or, um, or Skype me some questions and I'd be happy to, uh, to help. Thanks, Chad. Appreciate it. Um, get you next time. Any affiliate program, Eugene? Uh, uh, yes, that's on my roadmap. It's not done yet. Uh, I know a few people who bug me uh, constantly for that, um, but yeah, so it's planned. It's planned. It's one of my uh, pink, purple um, post-it, meaning it's something that I should pay high attention to. 
Thanks, Parker. Catch you later as well. Thanks for popping on. Mark, keep up the good work. You can grow this thing? I hope so. Thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it as well, Mark, given your, um, your schedule. <laughs> Marshall, I don't want to leave. Don't leave, dude. I'm staying here all night. But my night is almost over, so... <laughs>